Hi there. After uploading the importing media tutorial, I started getting a lot of comments and questions from people who were having problems importing their media into DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look at a compilation of the most common import problems you might come across. The first, and arguably the most frustrating issue you might have, is that your volume might not even appear in the library when you open up DaVinci. So for example, my hard drive is on the F volume, but I can't even see it. The first thing we want to do is check to make sure the drive is being recognized by the computer in the first place because this might not be a DaVinci Resolve issue. Your drive might actually be incompatible if you're using something that's Mac formatted on a PC or vice versa. So I can open up my Windows Explorer in this case and I can see this letter represented so I know that the drive is definitely being read and I do have access to it. In which case, I probably want to go into the DaVinci Resolve preferences and check my media storage locations. And here I've got a couple of volumes listed, but nothing else. So I can now click on the Add button and introduce this drive. So I've clicked on it. I've got my F volume here and select folder. And I'm going to save this. And from now on, every time I open DaVinci Resolve, it will already be reading the F volume, whether anything's connected to it or not. In the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, any changes that you make in the preferences will automatically show up in the library. If you're using an older version, then you might have to right-click and refresh the library first. And if you're using a much older version, then you might have to turn off DaVinci Resolve and restart it in order to see the changes that you've made in the preferences. On top of that, you might want to go down here and enable automatically display attached local and network storage locations, which is just a really long-winded way of saying, from now on, show all of my available drives and volumes in case I want to use them. And in this case, that's revealed my C and my D drives as well. If you've revealed all your volumes and you still can't access the drive, it's possible that you might not have write access to it. So inside of your Finder or Explorer, right-click and access the properties of the drive and see if maybe it's been locked or password protected, in which case you might have to take care of that first. All right, now that's taken care of. You can now access your drive and you might even see the folders that all of your media is in. But when you double-click the folders, it might reveal that there's nothing inside. Once again, the first thing we do is we check the video files outside of DaVinci Resolve to make sure that the issue is not with them first. So I'm going to launch Media Explorer and here's this folder that I accessed. And yes, I can actually see a collection of video files here. I'm going to also make sure that they're not corrupted by launching them in an external video player. So that could be QuickTime or Windows Media Player. I like to use VLC because it's third party and it supports a much wider range of file types and codecs. And yeah, I can scrub through this and I can reveal that, yep, there's definitely stuff happening here. So I'm going to close this, and now the troubleshooting turns to DaVinci Resolve because clearly that's where the problem is. And the most obvious explanation as to what's happening here is that either the file type or the codec, or both, are not supported by DaVinci Resolve. You can check this by opening up a web browser, and I'm going to type in DaVinci Resolve supported file formats, PDF. I'm going to leave a link to this document in the description, but here is where you can check all of the different file formats. So these are the ones that indicate your container, .avi, .mov, .dpx, etc. And also important, in the middle column, you have your codex. So this was the language that was used to encode your video data, and without which you're unable to read it. When you were installing DaVinci Resolve, if you had followed through with including everything in the installation, including the SQL databases, then you should be able to support all of these codecs. If you opted not to install those extra features, you might find that there are certain things that DaVinci Resolve will not be able to do. Whichever the case, in order to work with incompatible footage, you first need to convert it into a high-quality format that is supported by DaVinci Resolve. This is a process known as transcoding, and I will demonstrate a practical example of it in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and until then.